you click on the Lugia, it swings to the left, you want to use Tempest Dive, the card swings to the right, and then you get a zap, and then back to the left! It doesn't make any sense! And then back to the right! Please tell me how that makes sense! I've gotten a lot of comments from people who are like, why are you critiquing the Pokemon trading card game live? They gave me free Lugias. Giving out free Lugias doesn't mean that the client is good. It just means that you got free Lugias. <laughs> That's that, which is nice. And I'm glad you got free Lugias. It's not gonna matter if nobody plays the client because it's bad, right? So free cards don't matter if the client is bad because nobody will play, right? And also, giving out free cards doesn't require any skill on the part of the developers. In fact, you can fix a game economy just by giving out stuff for free. That's what they try to do in real life, too. <laughs> What's harder to fix than an economy is a bad game. The bad game is way more difficult to fix than economy. Economy is easy. Just give out stuff for free. That's it, right? And I'm not gonna wear, I love this hat, but I'm not gonna wear this hat for my critique because I feel like people will think I'm joking. And I'm not joking, okay? So I'm putting on my serious gamer hat. There we go. I wanna make a video, I guess, talking concisely about my uh, critiques of the client. Not talking about bugs, but talking about overarching direction because I care a lot. I care probably more than anybody else on planet Earth. I care about this client because me, more than anybody, depends on this client to make a living. Name somebody else who depends on this client more than I do to make a living. Name somebody. I'll wait. My very existence depends very much on this client and its success. So I am very, very invested in its success. After wrestling with Live's existence for a year and the state that it's in, I have now come to the point where I realize they probably aren't going to trash it and start over, which is the first thing that I wanted them to do and something that I was begging them to do for the last year. And it seems like that's not the direction they're going. So now we're in damage control mode because the damage has been done. The world has seen this client. The reports are out. I've read lots of gaming news reports that are talking about, you know, what a mess it is. The damage is done. People have seen it. They've experienced it all of that, so now we're in damage control. The client is, in its current state, rough and worse to play than the Pokemon trading card game online, which is an inherent problem because you have something that people played with for a decade, right? Invested thousands and thousands of dollars into their accounts, right? And then to move all of that work and investment to a client that is a downgrade uh, is going to hurt that player's morale. So like I said, that damage has already been done. Taking a game that players have been playing for a decade and making them move to a less stable, less visually appealing, less functional experience is going to be a move that injures the player base, which is one of the reasons why I'm so uh, upset about everything. Now on the plus side for new players, they're getting free cards. But again, you know, that's not really a point to defend the client. Like you could give out free cards on whatever client. It's actually not hard to do. All you have to do is just click a button and give people free cards. So that doesn't actually have to do anything with the construction of the game. Fixing the structure and the appearance of a game is much more difficult to do. So where to begin? It's really difficult. I think I'm just gonna begin by playing a game and we're kind of just gonna see where it goes. And we could begin with editing a deck. Editing a deck is like a very difficult and not intuitive experience. Very hard to keep track of what I'm doing. Very hard to keep track of what cards are in the deck. I mean, just for for logic's sake, the deck builder should be the big one and the searching card finder should be the small one, right? I mean, just like logically, the deck that I'm building should be right here. Like just logically, I just very simply, right? 
the deck that I'm building should be should be large and viewable so I can view my canvas and see what I'm working with. And then the part that you use to search out your cards should be like over here on the right. It's just it's just bad design, which is one of the reasons why I say that the team really needs to bring an artist on or somebody who somebody who like is really good at design because everything everything feels just kind of backwards and and out of sorts, you know? UI should feel intuitive. It should feel natural to use. It's like ergonomics. A chair should feel comfortable to sit in. Uh, a tool should feel comfortable to use with a hand. Things should feel like they were designed to do the thing they're intended to do. And things that don't feel like they are designed to do the thing that they're intended to do are kind of failures, frankly. This deck builder doesn't feel designed to build decks. It, it feels like things were kind of just slapped in here by someone who doesn't build decks, right? Because as someone who builds decks, you want to have your deck be front and center. It just makes sense. Having your deck in this small area off to the side really, really hurts the deck building experience. Now this new age kind of early PC looking design to the game board is not super enticing to me. Uh, looks like I'm aboard a spaceship or something like that, which is the exact opposite experience that I have when I'm playing a tabletop game. In fact, a tabletop game takes place on a tabletop, not a spaceship, so not a big fan. That's something that I've noticed right away is that everything looks grainy and the resolution on the cards looks poor. This Hollow texture here on the Radiant Alakazam looks extremely poor across the board. That research that popped up into my face when I drew it also was very low resolution for some reason. Playing the Quick Ball, the Quick Ball looks good here. The cards in my hand are very low resolution and feel cheap, which is something that I don't like. Also, these hollow textures on these cards in the deck all look bad and cheap. I think right here, you're getting like kind of the full gamut of my complaints with the hollow textures. You've got this Lugia V, which looks ugly with the green and blue stripes. You've got Luminion, which looks ugly with the green and blue stripes and low resolution. You've got Radiant Charizard with like this really crazy cross hatching, low resolution stuff going on. And you've got like the insane grain on the amazing Raikou. So you've kind of got the whole gamut of poor hollow textures all right there for you to see. So that was actually a really good clip. I'm glad we got to see that. Now, something that I've noticed about, um, see, that is very jarring. Something that I've noticed is that one of the initial critiques of the Pokemon trading card game live was that the animations took too long. So instead of redesigning the animations, they kind of just turned up the speed of the animations. So the animations are still jarring. And that's one of my biggest issues is that they're jarring. They don't feel good. The animations are jarring, but now they're jarring and fast, right? Instead of being constructed in a way that they feel natural, it's like where you used to kind of get smacked by the animations in slow motion. Now you get smacked really fast. With cards like flying and whipping up into your face seemingly out of nowhere, it just doesn't feel good to play, which is an issue that I've had with the client the whole time. I mean, just look at this Lugia down here. This could be someone's collection that they saved up years for, right? I mean, a collection that they worked on for sometimes 10 years on the Pokemon trading card game online. online, And then if you transfer it to live, you're just getting cards that look grainy and cheap. So that's just going to be a really tough experience for players to deal with. We'll attach powerful colorless energy and use Professor's Research. And it's gotten a little more snappy, right? It's gotten fast. They sped up the animations, but they still feel like very kind of abrupt and jerky, which is something that I think detracts from my experience as well. We'll use Lugia's Summoning Star. This feels like a Microsoft spreadsheet and not like a game that I'm playing. Uh, this whole, like the, the dissecting of the card into this menu is something that I don't like. And then it pops away into this low resolution thing that like goes over there for some reason. 
A Pokemon card is something fun, exciting, and inviting, and then it turns it into this, which kind of looks like I am like using some sort of outdated Windows program. Like, yes, there are like s stones and textures here in the background now, but like you're not fixing the problems that exist, the low textures, the jarring animations, that Yveltal that flew into my face. When you draw a card, you don't like bring it right here to draw the card. It just feels unnatural. Everything that they design in the game should feel natural. It should feel like something that you do when you're playing a card game. And it feels like the motions are designed in a way that feels extremely forced. Like when I attached that special energy to the Raikou is very jarring. Like, why does it need to pop out and do all that crazy stuff? Like when I attach an energy to a Pokemon, it doesn't need to do all of that. It, it, it feels like it does too much. Every time an opponent plays a card, it feels like it's slapping you in the face. It doesn't feel like it's being informative. That really wasn't even enough time. And that's the thing is they sped, they sped everything up. So it's like, that's not really enough time for me to be able to comprehend what's being played. It's like they just smack you with it and then it's gone, right? So instead of making better animations, they just made faster animations and now it just feels like you're kind of just being visually smacked. Cause like, cool, they played Earth and Sealstone. If I was, and look at that, every card that they play is just smack you in the face, smack you in the face, smack you in the face. If I had wanted to know what Earth and Sealstone does, it's like, I, I still can't tell what it does. So what's the point of like bringing it up so close to my face if I can't tell what that card does in that like very small portion of a second where they, you know, bring it that close to your face. I'm gonna Marnie them, Luminous Sign. See, okay, so that's another thing. When you put down the Luminian, it like jolts to the right and then jolts to the left. That's incredibly unnatural. Why does the card first juke over here and then fake you out and go over here? These are the kinds of things I'm talking about. Like someone designing this game is like it juked from the right, juked to the left, and then juked back to the right. Like why does my card, nobody who's handling a card would ever do that, right? Why would I take my card and then I go over here and then over here? Nobody would ever do that. And again, every time you use an attack, every time you use an ability, every time you play a card, the cards juke from the left to the right, See, even right there, it's juking from the left to the right, and it's just like, it feels incredibly busy and haphazard and unnatural for no reason. It's not actually, oh my gosh. Okay, and then the flashbang, that's crazy. When you take a prize card, the feeling is supposed to be joyous, exciting, rewarding. In the Pokemon trading card game live, when you take a prize card, you get hit with this aqua blue flashbang for some reason. And then the flash of the yellow there when that Zara Aura was promoted, it's all very jarring and not satisfying. And that's one of my biggest critiques of the Pokemon trading card game live is that it doesn't feel good to play. That Mareep flashing up there in front of my face, none of it feels good. It all is super disorienting. After playing the Pokemon trading card game live for hours, I usually have a headache. And the reason I have a headache is because I've been getting visually kind of assaulted for hours on end at that point. Playing the Pokemon trading card game live feels like I'm at a rave that started at 8 a.m a morning after heavy drinking. It feels like I'm hung over and at a rave. That's what it feels like. It hurts visually. That's a visually really terrible experience. Taking a prize should feel exciting and good because that kind of reward makes you want to continue playing. It's like the sounds when you're when people are doing the slots at 
a casino or something like that. The sounds are supposed to be exciting, make you want to play, right? Make you feel good about doing whatever you're doing. Everything that I do within the Pokemon trading card game live makes me feel bad about doing what I'm doing. The way that the hollow patterns look, the way that the cards fly up in my face as I'm playing the game, the way that I get the blue flashbang every time I take a prize. I don't even have to say anything. We can kind of just sit back and watch it. Oh my gosh, and that, like they scooped and and that was just, it was startling, okay? The whole thing, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel exciting. Now we're at the avatars. Next to the beautiful artwork that's included on Pokemon trading cards, the avatars just look out of place, right? Because so much thought and care is put into this artwork. And I think we've got a beautiful example right here. The Raikou looks absolutely stunning. I'm not a big fan of the grainy texture on the Raikou. You get a really good example of the lack of quality with the grainy texture in the cards when you look at the lightning symbol on the amazing Raikou. And this is a problem that they have with all of the hollow textures is that for some reason they have made them grainy and pixelated. If you look at this lightning symbol, it's super grainy, super pixelated, and just doesn't look right. Again, if you look at this beautiful alt art Zara Aura V, it's a gorgeous card. The drawing on it is fantastic. Why does it have this really obnoxious blue and green streak just kind of flowing through the card? It kind of detracts from the whole experience of the holographic card and makes the card look ugly in a way that it is not. Not in paper, it doesn't look more realistic. This is not what an alt art Zara Aura V looks like. And the hollow pattern, instead of enhancing the card, is actually detracting from the card's experience overall. But both of the illustrations on these cards are beautiful illustrations. And a critique that I have of the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live is that none of the other art in the client, none of the other designs in the client can stand up or look appropriate next to the beautiful card design of the Pokemon trading card game, right? So we've got these 3D avatars, which don't look right next to the illustrations. We've got these very bare bones looking windows that don't look right next to these beautiful illustrations. Nothing is stylized, nothing is exciting to look at. It looks like I'm looking at a spreadsheet. Now, some people may say, all right, but it's in beta, take it easy. Well, the game has been in beta for almost a year now, and the game has been in development for over four years. Taking all of that into consideration, if this is where we're at after four years of development, then where are you expecting to be anytime soon? The fact that people internally did not look at this, the stuff that I'm showing you right now, and determine that it was inappropriate to deliver this product when we already have a product that looks and feels nicer than this, then you have to ask yourself, what's going on? This all should have been looked at and should have been addressed before the world got its hands on it. Now, I understand if the team is working through stuff under the hood, getting cards to work as they're intended to work, and if that takes some time to figure out, that's fine. But the visual stuff should not be taking a step down, especially after four years of development, okay? The visual stuff should at least be on par with our decade-old browser game. The visuals should at least be on par with that, and the fact that they're not means that people who have 10 years 
worth of their collections, worth of their money, worth of their time invested into their collections and to see those collections decrease in visual fidelity when they go from the Pokemon trading card game online to the Pokemon trading card game live is a damaging experience for the player base. It should have not gotten into consumer hands in a worse position than the Pokemon trading card game online. It's not like this is the gold standard of online clients, right? I'm comparing and contrasting live to a decade old previously a browser game. Like PTCGO is not great, bro. It is not. All right, I'm running the test deck feature on the Pokemon trading card game online to show off some of the things that I like about the animation style of the Pokemon trading card game online. First of all, the hand is displayed in very nice high resolution. You can tell that all of the gold cards, alt art cards, and holographic cards look nice and are rendered nicely, even when they are in the hand. When you hover over cards, there's a nice high resolution pop-up that shows you what each of the cards in your hand does. And you can tell just by looking at a card like this Luminion V, how much nicer the holographic rendering is on this card than what you're getting on the Pokemon trading card game live. Something that I really like about the Pokemon trading card game online is that when you're looking through your deck, all of the cards are rendered beautifully in high resolution. All of the animations look great. The fidelity of the cards is very high when compared directly with a deck search on the Pokemon trading card game live, you can see the huge discrepancy with the quality of the cards and the resolution in the deck search. Something else that I think that the Pokemon trading card game online gets right is the way that the cards animate when you want to use them. If we take a look at a card like Manaphy, when you click on it, the card swings up to the right, which is what all of the cards do on the Pokemon trading card game online when you're about to use them. They don't swing over to the left for no reason like they do on the Pokemon trading card game live. They stay right here, which just feels natural because this is where the cards go when you want to use them. They go to the right. So we'll retreat Manaphy into Lugia. And the card swings down to the bench where we expect it to go. And then we'll click on Lugia. Lugia will swing up to the right. And we will use Summoning Star. And when we use Summoning Star, the card stays there on the right side and what this does is it makes you feel very oriented makes you feel very comfortable with what's happening on the screen because your card isn't swinging back and forth unnecessarily across the screen for no reason we're going to summon both the archaeops out of our discard pile and put them onto the bench and then similarly we are gonna click on Archaeops. When you use Archaeops, it swings up to the right. Something that I really like about the Pokemon trading card game online is that the text boxes that pop up over the cards are not intrusive to the artwork on the cards. They feel like they fit naturally with the way that the cards look, like this Primal Turbo ability, for instance. It doesn't look like an outdated software system or some sort of weird space age tech kind of thing. It doesn't look like a spreadsheet. It looks like 
it is a text box that kind of just popped out of the card. And that's something that I really don't like about the Pokemon trading card game live is that the text boxes that pop up out of the cards don't look like they belong on Pokemon cards. They don't fit in with the look of the cards whatsoever. They look more like they belong in Microsoft Office than they do on a Pokemon trading card game application. Now, when we click Primal Turbo, again, the Archaeops does not wave across the screen unnecessarily. We are brought to the deck where we can see not only the cards that we can accelerate with Primal Turbo, but we can also easily check the rest of the cards in the deck without having to click an extra prompt like you do on the Pokemon trading card game live. Now, when you're ready to perform an attack on the Pokemon trading card game online, you'll notice we click the card, it swings up to the right, the text box is non-invasive, and the focus is on the beauty of the card. And that's something that I think that the Pokemon trading card game online more or less gets right. The text box does not take away from the visual appearance of the card. But on the Pokemon trading card game live, the very kind of, uh, I don't know, the very technical and unappealing text box just pops over half of the card and it doesn't look nice, right? So that really takes away from the whole experience. But something that I really like about the Pokemon trading card game online is that when you go to use an attack, you click on the card, it winds up, you click on the attack, and the animation feels very natural. The Lugia comes down and it attacks the active Pokemon. You get to take a prize card, and the card flips over nicely and comes straight into your hand. There's no sort of excessive flashbang or anything visually assaulting happening there. It's all very nice and it feels smooth. Now, when you think about using an attack or hitting something, right? It's very natural to wind up and then swing. That's what you do when you swing a baseball bat, after all. You wind up, you swing back, and then you follow through to your target. This is why the animations on the Pokemon trading card game online feel so natural, because they logically make sense. Now, something that you don't do when you're getting ready to swing into something is wave the card back and forth before you eventually tomahawk down on it. And that's kind of what you're getting on the Pokemon trading card game live. The animations feel jarring, they feel disorienting, they don't feel logical, they don't feel ergonomic, they don't feel like they fit with what you would expect when a card is attacking something in front of it, which is what makes the entire Pokemon trading card game live experience so difficult on the senses, is because none of what's happening visually makes any logical sense, or feels good, or looks good. It all feels abrasive and jarring and makes me want to log off and stop playing because after playing the Pokemon trading card game live for any extended period of time, I will start to get a headache because of all of the unnecessary animations, the unnecessary flashing, and the difficulty in playing the game. I think that it just makes logical sense that when you want to attack something, the card swings up, you swing back just like you would with a baseball bat and then the Pokemon swings forward into its target, which feels natural, makes a lot of sense. 
the animation looks crisp and nice, the prizes come up, you get to select your prizes, and the game moves on. What the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live needs is vision. It needs someone or a team that is able to visualize where the client needs to be and how it needs to feel in year 2023 and needs to be able to deliver on that. My biggest concern is that in the year that we've seen it, things have not improved enough for me to have good faith that that vision is going to be actualized anytime soon, which makes me incredibly nervous as someone who depends on the Pokemon trading card game online and one day the Pokemon trading card game live to make a living and share my love of the Pokemon trading card game with the world. You know, I've got nothing against the devs for live, and I know that they're probably working really hard and are and have a lot of challenges and, and this, that, and the other. I get it, but like, okay, so whatever, whatever is going on, I, don't, I can't speak on it because I don't know, but whatever is going on with it has not been successful. That's not me being a hater, okay? I'm not just being a hater, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not just being a hater. This is the reality we're living in. You need to have some introspection and be able to look at the products that you've delivered to us and ask, okay, well, how do I expect them to feel if they have something where they've been working on their thing for 10 years, right? 10 years, they've had their cards look a certain way, they've had their cards feel a certain way, the quality has been a certain way, and after 10 years, to have that go backwards feels insulting, right? To have backwards progression feels insulting. It feels bad. And that's no hate against the, de the devs. I have nothing but love for everybody at the Pokemon Company International. I love them, I do. I love working with them. I have a great relationship with many people at the Pokemon Company International. I absolutely love what we're doing there. I love it, okay? I'm so jazzed and excited about so many things happening with Pokemon. You have to call it like you see it. Everything that's been occurring with the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live in the last 12 months that we as a community have been aware, aware of it has been, I'd say, largely not great. You have to just, you have to call it like you see it. You have to, you have to do that because I'm in a situation where I have to do that. I can't just blindly shill this thing because I depend on it. I'm not gonna lead the community astray. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and polish the the turd, you know? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that because I care too much. I'm invested in the community. The community is what has allowed me to make a living sharing the game with the world. So I owe them my honesty. Something seriously needs to change. And I think that I've been more than fair, you know? I was originally shocked at the lower quality of the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live, and I got angry because I was shocked at how much worse it was and how much of a step backwards it was from what we'd already been accustomed to. And that original shock came with anger and frustration, and I let that out. Uh, because I didn't know what else to do. Over the last handful of months, I've tried just ignoring it because I'm not a negative person and I don't like starting drama and I don't want to bring that energy into the community. And I want to be a positive force in the game. And I felt like talking about live was bringing me into a really negative space. So... I kind of took some time off to just not think about it. But now that we're coming up on a year, I wanted to put my thoughts together in a cohesive way and hopefully a constructive way to help demonstrate 
my issues with the direction of the new client. So that it was very clear, I'm not just being a hater, I'm not just being, you know, any type of way about it. Like there are some very logical and reasonable quality of life things that we would expect from a new and updated client that are just not there and not seeing adequate development towards those things after a year of beta testing is extremely concerning. And I think that that's fair. And I think that that's something that we as a community need to make sure is heard because we're not gonna take a step backwards in quality. We're not gonna take a step backwards with the performance of the game. We're not gonna take a step backwards visually. And the collections that players have been working for over a decade to amass on the Pokemon trading card game online, I think deserve to look at least as good on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live as they did on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. And I don't think that that's an unreasonable thing to expect from a game that has been in development for four years. The Pokemon Trading Card Game Live is not being released into a vacuum. There are other games that are doing exactly what the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live is setting out to do and doing it better. Magic Arena, Hearthstone, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. All of these games look and perform beautifully and they pay homage to the artistic direction of those franchises and they are rewarding games to play and experience. And that is all I am expecting from the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. I am on board with the new direction of the economy. I am on board with crafting. I think better accessibility to the game is fantastic and something that should absolutely happen with our new client. However, if the client isn't at least as good or better than the outdated client that came before it, then the player base will decrease and evaporate. We need to make sure that the new client is better than the old client and, my God, up to par with the other clients that exist for other trading card games because we know that Pokemon is one of the biggest franchises in the world, the biggest franchise in the world, and definitely capable of such. So that's it. That's my piece. Those are my thoughts on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. After about a year of being aware of it and watching it unfold in front of us. Thank <laughs> you.